Okay, guys, we're back. Um, everybody, everything's wrapped up here, but I managed to grab two last speakers uh, for the conference. Um, just trying to wrap up and talking about everything that we um, covered today. It was, it was a short three day, three day, sorry, a short three hour session, but a um, bunch of really great uh, speakers because there were government officials, there was uh, people from the public and also from uh, organizations like NCBFAA. And then we'll talk right now to Eric, right? Yes. Uh, from Basque. So let's do this. So um, JD, if everybody remembers um, real quick, JD? JD Gonzalez, I'm the president of the NCBFAA. So. Yes, sir. And then Eric? Eric Moncayo, uh, international president for the World Basketball Organization. Nice. So, Bass, for those that don't know, it crosses into the uh, realm of um, security, uh, supply chain security. Uh, in fact, I think it was credited at one time as the originator of CTPAD way back in the day. Yeah. So, um, I go back that far, guys. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell from all this white hair. Um, so, um, you obviously spoke in the uh, CTPAT session, right? I did, yes. So, um, what are we, um, like, it, it's evolving a lot. And uh, so, how is Basque and CTPAT kind of like collaborating or working together, I guess, members of each one of the, the programs? Like, um, how, how did, was that discussed? And, and sure, sure. Uh, so, one of the, 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 the main takeaway is that a BAS certification is, the, is identical to a CTPAT validation. Mm -hmm. So, if a CTPAT uh, inspector wants to go look at a Basque certified warehouse, he's going to find a, a warehouse that's in compliance. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we try to do. We want to make, make sure that our criteria are the same as CTPATs. That way, any Basque facility anywhere in the world is going to pass a CTPAT certification. And that's kind of one of our selling points to our clients, to our members, is that if you get certified with Basque, you will pass any AO certification or any CTPAT nice. certification anywhere in the world because that's where we hold that, that, that standard because we want to make sure that, that we keep that partnership strong with CTPAT. Right. And so Basque is not necessarily a government program from any specific government. It's more private where you uh, make sure that this is getting done a little maybe more efficiently if someone needs to, um, I guess, ver verify or validate or whatever, right? Correct. So this is a private-led uh, mm -hmm. organization. As you stated, it was started in, in the in the mid '90s mm -hmm. uh, by the private sector. It has been led by the private sector ever since. I personally retired from Customs and Border Protection. I worked with Basque before I retired, uh, and so I was very happy to be able to come on with Basque and uh, and now wearing my my private sector <laughs> hat, still represent those same uh, challenges, those same uh, priorities, but now on behalf of the private sector. Nice and uh, JD. So your session was on rails. I did the rail, um, yeah, like um, how we could improve and also uh, the certain issues that we have right now. So considering just recently there was a stoppage of El Paso right. and Eagle Pass. And uh, I mean, just I was looking up some information as a, it was a $2 million per day loss for all the rail shipments that were stopped. So I know that immigration is a big um, situation with that as well. So um, in dealing with some of the Laredo area um, rail guys, they said they have their own proactive approach and we're kind of hoping they can share some of the information. Even though the other rail guys aren't here, this is mainly the trade guys, right. but still, you know, that's some information that can be shared and kind of work with the trade because supply chain management in that in that aspect, it's a huge loss considering the number of days that was shut down. You know, I, I feel there's some room for improvement. So. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, we were talking to someone earlier, and uh, he was also on the panel for CTPAT, and uh, he um, was discussing about, you know, like unwanted cargo, <laughs> either human or you know illicit drugs or whatever it may be, you know that that and how they they can deal with that and make sure that 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 uh, it doesn't disrupt our supply chains as much. So so that was really good that y'all talked about that. Yeah, and then uh, what about like on the technology? Well, I'll ask you about that. Like in the technology mm -hmm. aspects of of uh, supply chain security, we hear a lot about supply chain resiliency. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get disruptions here and there. You know, geopolitical um, nature. <laughs> the Panama Canal kind of messed up everybody. The ship crashing in uh, Baltimore, yes. you know, and stuff like that. I mean, I know um, I know you don't deal directly with stuff like that, but you do actually have to make sure that your, 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 your members, per se, have some form of supply chain, like resiliency in case there's a breach of security, correct? Absolutely. And, and so I'll, I'll give you this one example that I heard at, a, at the CTPAD conference when we, they were having the, the, off, the, the computer guys, the mm -hmm. IT guys, talking about presentations and they were and they were talking about how their system gets hit thousands of times a day thousands of times a day and so they're constantly being tested and so that's something that you can apply that same meth metaphor to the supply chain the supply chain is going to be tested right regardless 
doesn't matter how good you do, how, how good of a job you do is going to be tested. What, what you can influence and impact is how strong your, 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 mm -hmm. your personal supply chain is and how resilient and how quickly you can recover mm -hmm. when you get hit. And that's really what we're trying to advocate for in Basque is making sure that you put together a process that can withstand those hits and recu recuperate and recover as quickly as possible. Right. And, and are any efforts on expanding to more like on, um, like checking for forced labor, I guess, because that, that's coming more into CTPAD as well, you know, so you're, I'm sure you're going to have to add something to that, correct? So as a matter of fact, two years ago, we updated our security criteria in alignment with CTPADs. So now it includes forced labor. Okay. Um, and so one of the things that I like to do at these, at these particular events is talk to the vendors, talk to industry to see what tools are out there to help mm -hmm. me you know, validate my supply chain because we were already, re that is already a BASC requirement and has been for the last two years. But I want to make sure that I can provide our members the tools that they can do, that they can use in order right. to re to meet that requirement. Right. And that's been a problem with brokers, I guess, because they're the ones that get to see the detentions or whatever. If something's coming over that is, um, that is suspected as a, as a forced labor. So like, I mean, I know, I know we didn't talk really about that here at this conference, but as a broker, I mean, how are you guys dealing? Are you depending on the, on the, um, on your clients to, to provide you with that information? Do you partner with CBP or with, with trade to, or uh, the government to, to help with, with uh, combat anything with forced labor or even, we, we talk a lot about um, fentanyl, you know, like a lot of that, you know, so how's the broker community, you know, um, partnering to, to help with w combat those? You know, we're having constant dis discussions with headquarters, and there's three hot topics that are going on. You mentioned one of them, one of them being type 86, de minimis. Right. That's the big challenge, and that's where the fentanyl's coming in as well. You talk about forced labor. So that's really hot that we've been having discussions as well. And as a brokers community, we have more involvement on that. And then cybersecurity. So those are three oh, things yes. that, that's really been, I mean, subjects that we had more time, I'm sure we could have a bigger right. bigger audience. But the fact is, is those are on the, on the radar for customs. They're reaching out to the brokers community to see what we can do. Mm -hmm. For type 86, 321, I know that that's something that we're having uh, constant discussions. I know that it really hasn't hit the southern border yet, but it's, it's they're working towards that because there's more increased vol volume in that. Most of that is within the air environment. Mm -hmm. And they already have some kind of set programs where they're, you know, because of being air, their manifestation is required in a different manner of ways on the southern border. On the southern border, a lot of the carriers are more of the uh, users of this. They're not mm -hmm. the brokers. And since it's not brokers, unless it's type 86, the carriers can get through get things through a lot faster just mm -hmm. by manifesting and using a spreadsheet to customs. So there's more automation that should be working towards that. I know that we're trying to help customs out to try to provide more information. Customs is being very strict on this right now. And uh, like was mentioned earlier, and I got a, a text and a couple of emails that we discussed, they canceled six large brokers off type 86 mm -hmm. because customs is not putting, tolerating, the, I mean, the, they're, they're tolerating any kind of mistakes because they've already gave out enough warnings. Right. Now they're saying you're canceling the program now. So they're, they're working on this as well. Yeah. Top of, of the, when she said the, the forced labor, I know there's a lot of, it doesn't really affect the Southern border, but it is there because we're starting to get some Chinese products. So I know that a lot of us are starting to get more involved. Right. It is importer requiring. And the one thing that we're kind of working on is a GBI, Global Business Identifier. Okay. And with that information, it's kind of replacing the MID. Mm -hmm. And that gives us more information on the actual manufacturer. Right. So because there's a lot of MID information. And then I, uh, the third thing is cybersecurity. There's a lot of outreach going out with customs. And I know that we're trying to provide um, information on contingency plans for ourselves as a trade, a private sector, how we're going to manage this just in case there's some circumstance where we get violated how we're going to stop, how we're going to notify customs. And so that's something we're working through as well. So. Right. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you very much. Thanks for stopping by. Thank, thank you, you for saying hi and uh, really appreciate it. And uh, um, that's it for now, guys. Thank, thank you very you. much. Uh -huh. Thank yeah. you.